It is sure to be a big summer at the box office, a lot of big action and adventure. Movies like Indiana Jones and Mission Impossible are coming out, along with some big gambles from the studios as well. We're happy to welcome back film critic Brian Eggert of Deep Focus Review. Thanks for coming back on, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, always nice to talk with you. First, let's talk about what you call uh, tentpole movies. Let's watch a clip. A few times in my life I've seen things. I've been tortured with voodoo. Been shot nine times, including once by your father. Ah, sorry. But I've been looking for this all my life. Okay, I just got really excited. Help me out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is an 80-year-old Harrison Ford who's returning to you know cracking the whip. Uh, we don't have Steven Spielberg, unfortunately, this time, but we do have James Mangold, who is a director of, uh, he made Logan, and he made the oh, remake great. of 310 to Yuma. Oh, great. So he's kind of versed in spectacle and kind of period pieces. And, uh, you know, you've got this mysterious dial of destiny, which is not something I've ever heard of before this movie. Where does it take um, place? What's this? Do you know the story behind that mystery? Uh, I, I'm particularly not looking it up. I want, it. I want to okay. be surprised. But got I've it. never heard of it before. Uh, right. As far as I know, it's fictional. Um, and, uh, you know, I really just hope that this, this movie ends the franchise. Uh, I assume they're not going to make another one after this, but I hope it ends on a high note. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if Short Round comes back. Uh, not that I've heard well, he of. Well, he got the gold, or he got the Oscar, right? Absolutely. You get yeah. Short Round back in there. You do a great <laughs> right. job. Uh, also, a huge blockbuster star. Everything he does gets hit out of the park. Tom Cruise is back with another Mission Impossible movie. Here's a clip. I don't know how, I mean, that's amazing. I don't know how every Mission Impossible movie seems to still work without jumping the shark. They, they defy all odds. I mean, yeah. most sequels, most franchises get worse as sequels go on and then they kind of peter out. Uh, Mission Impossible just seems to be building towards something. Yeah. You know, you've got Tom Cruise doing his own stunt still. I mean, you saw him, you know, driving a motorcycle off a cliff there. Uh, you've got this writer director who's been really working with uh, Tom Cruise a lot, uh, named Christopher McQuarrie, who's who's been doing the last couple of these Mission Impossible movies. And I think he just has a sense of scope and works closely with Cruise on, on how to develop the next stunt and what's gonna be the next big thing. Um, and you call them tentpole movies. Yeah, these are movies that are the, the studios are using to kind of hold up their year. You know, they're holding yeah. up you know, like a circus. They know it's gonna work. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And it's just a matter of getting people back out to the theaters or not. Right. Which right. they have, right? I mean, if the movie's right, they come. They, they do, yes. And unfortunately, there aren't these kind of ancillary markets as much with, with streaming. You know, there's no like DVD or anything like yeah. that. So they got to make all that movie in, in uh, or money. all that money in the, in, the, in the box office run. All right. Well, Disney's been in the headlines a lot for other reasons, but something out of character for Disney films, perhaps, is a scary movie. Let's watch a clip from Haunted Mansion. I should warn you, before you step inside the house, this could change the course of your entire life. I'm not afraid of a couple ghosts. <laughs> you say that now. Okay, so is it, what's going on here with Disney? So, Haunted Mansion, you know, they made a, they made a Haunted Mansion 20 the theme years park. ago. Right? Yeah, and it's a theme park, yeah, right? Yeah. And they made that one with Eddie Murphy, like in 2003. Oh, that's right. And it was just kind of a goofball effort, you yeah. know? This, they got a director, his name is Justin Simeon. He made this great uh, little horror comedy uh, that not a lot of people saw called Bad Hair. It's on mm. Hulu. Okay. And it's very scary and very funny at the same time. And he, I think he's applying that kind of quality to this where it's it's fun, but it's scary. Uh, you got a lot of fun stars in it. Um, Seemed kind of Jordan Peele-ish a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Um, you've also got Lakeith Stanfield, who was in uh, actually Get uh, Out. Right, he's so and good. He's awesome. Amazing. He, like, what an unconventional lead for a Disney movie, and he's headlining this. Great, okay. I'll, I'll check it out for sure. Um, next, let's talk about gambles. Uh, these are ones that the, the, the studios are kind of rolling the dice on, right. and the, you say the Barbie movie kind of falls in this category. Let's watch it. What are you doing here? 
I'm coming with you. Did you bring your rollerblades? I literally go nowhere without them. So you think that it's a gamble? I think people are gonna flock to this. I, I think it's a gamble in the sense that, is this for young people? Is this for old people? Is it for both? Is it, you know, is this a commercial movie yeah. where it's just selling dolls or is this um, something a little different? And I think, I think it's a little different, but I'm not sure how everyone's going to respond to it. Um, Greta Gerwig, the director, and her husband, Noah Baumbach, wrote the screenplay. Uh -huh. And they've got a very indie aesthetic, so I think they're going to take this this Barbie idea and sort of turn it on its head. Yeah. Uh, I'm worried that it's going to be too commercial uh, and maybe just, I don't know. Just Miss like, the mark. Uh, yeah, maybe feel like I'm being sold more What's than it I'm... What's rated? Uh, I, think, I think it's rated PG-13. Okay, um, that sounds about right. There's some kind of risque stuff in the yeah. uh, in the trailer. Our so. producer verified that PG-13. Okay, sure. interesting. Uh, how about a World War II movie? Uh, this one I'm extremely excited about, both for the story and for the actor. It's right. called Oppenheimer. Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world? Chances are near zero. Near zero. What do you want from theory alone? Zero would be nice. This, do you think this is a gamble or is this a go? I mean, it, in the wake of so many big movies like like Mission Impossible or, or yeah. all the other kind of franchise movies that are coming out in the summer, here's a, here's a biopic in the middle of summer about the guy who created the atom bomb. Now, a lot of people like maybe you and me who really love Christopher Nolan because he made you know Inception and the Dark Knight trilogy are gonna flock to this thing. Uh, will general audiences wanna go see a movie about the atomic bomb in the middle of summer? It seems like a prestige movie that's maybe going to come out in like November or December. Well, they flocked to Interstellar, right? They did, but I mean that's a big science fiction movie about yeah. time. You know, that's that's a that's a fun science fiction movie. I yeah. think um, Dunkirk was a war movie. There's an action element oh, to good it. Oh, good point. This is a biopic. Yeah. Uh, about a historical figure in yeah. the middle of summer, and I think only because it's Nolan are people going to flock to it. But I could also see it maybe bombing because there's so much other more entertaining things coming out. Time will tell. Yeah. Let's see. What other programming do we have? Uh, what, what else do we want to talk about? Uh, Just Hurt My Feelings, is that right? Yeah, yeah. What's uh, that one now? So this is kind of counter-programming, I think. Uh, these are, I have a couple of movies here that I want to talk about that are, that, are, that are not your traditional fare, that if you're tired of CGI and tired of robots and explosions, these are the kind of movies to see. Uh, you Hurt My Feelings is currently one of my favorite movies of the year. It's one of these kind of classic New York comedies where there. people are just sort of walking around and talking and mm -hmm. dealing with their feelings and it kind of creeps up on you on, of, of how emotional it is. Well, if you recommend it, I'm in. What's this one now? Asteroid City? Asteroid City is What's a Wes that? Anderson film. Oh, um, okay. It it's, you know, takes place in a desert town in the 50s. You got rockets, you got UFOs, you got half of Hollywood in this cast, including uh, Tom Hanks and Scarlett Johansson. Uh, Wes Anderson movies never make a lot of money, but they're always, you know, they make, they make about $30 million or somewhere around there, but they're always very memorable. Mm. Uh, and he's got that very particular aesthetic that, that really makes it known as a Wes Anderson movie. Seems like a 50s theme coming back. It you is, yeah. Elvis, and you got Oppenheimer, and you got Oscar. Anyway, Brian, thank you so much. I really appreciate Absolutely. you coming by, as Thanks always. Thanks for having me. Yeah, can't, can't wait to see some of these flicks. And you can find Brian's review on his website, Deep Focus Review, or on Rotten Tomatoes. We got a link, care11.com. Coming up next.